Paula, and one of the things that I love about homeschooling is the community, and that's what we're here for. We're just here to provide you a place to have conversation where we can learn and grow and share and encourage each other. And so we're going to discuss things from everything from curriculum and how-tos to tips and tricks to day-to-day -day lifestyle and more. You just never know. So today we're going to finish up um, our four-part series on learning styles. And today we're going to address right brain versus left brain. I just decided to do the two of them together. So this is also known as abstract versus concrete, intuitive versus logical slash reasoning, and global versus analytical. Most commonly though, you will hear it referred to as right brain versus left brain. So let's back up a little bit. What are learning styles? Learning styles are just the natural way that each of us processes information and understands things and learns best. So why is it important that you understand each of your children's different learning styles as well as your own and your spouse's? Well, this helps you select your curriculum and plan accordingly so that your day runs better and learning is easier and it's more enjoyable for everybody. So there is no right or wrong. There are just different learning styles. And often the struggles that happen in homeschooling families are due to the butting of heads because of a difference in a learning style versus the teaching style. They're not matching up. It's like a, putting a round um, peg in a square hole. So when you learn your children's learning styles and how to teach accordingly to each of those, this makes you um, develop effective and efficient techniques so that there is a lot less frustration throughout the day in you as well as your kids and because it just naturally improves the quality of learning and the speed as well. So your goal is education that sticks, right? So let's just go over really quick. I'll just mention the four main learning styles. So you have your visual spatial. These are your kids who um, really get things through seeing it and they're the ones that come up to you and say, look at this or show me that. Um, and then you have your auditory audio learners. These are the ones that listen best and learn through their ears, through hearing things and through speaking it so that they hear it themselves. And then you have your kinesthetic tactile learners. And these are those that are just always moving. They're your wiggle worms. They have to touch everything. They don't get it so much physically as they get it physically. Now, right brain versus left brain. So this refers to the two halves of our brain, the two hemispheres. And so this is where predominant thinking and processing occurs in each person. So you are either considered right or left brain. Okay, so often right brain um, people struggle with their learning and because, because they are being taught with left brain strategies. Left brain strategies are your traditional classroom, um, you know, everybody sits and learns the same way, the teacher shows something, they do it out of their books, those types of things. So when a right brain learner is taught with a left brain style, then they're unable to store that information in their mind and so then they're, they're unable to effectively learn. They're unable to refer back to those things because they just didn't really actually have it there. It doesn't stick. So often, this is an interesting fact, spouses will often be opposite of each other. One of you will be right brain, the other one will be left brain. And each child that you have will be opposite. And often it will be, your first one will be one, your second one will be the other, your third one will be like the first, and so forth. So in my particular family, um, my first clue before I understood anything and even knew that learning styles existed, my first clue that there was big differences in my children, my first two children, is that um, they, my second was very much struggling how to learn when I was using the exact same curriculum and I was teaching the exact same way I had taught 
her sibling who had learned just quickly and easily because she had the same learning style that I did. Um, so that was my first clue. My second clue was, um, and this is interesting, so my second child would draw a little cartoon figure. She would draw, you know, how little children draw a little picture of something. And normally you ask them, so tell me about this, and they'll just say like two or three sentences. And this child would tell you an entire story. It was like a chapter out of a novel. And it was just amazing how her mind was working. It was so imaginative, so creative. So I learned that I had to explore and I had to learn and research and discover the different learning styles between my kids. And I had to tweak and teach differently my second born than I did my first born. And once I did that, things went much smoother in our homeschool. So let's talk some about right brain. Um, so just for a point of reference, Einstein, it, uh, they have said, um, was right brain. Okay, and so your right brain um, children and people, they tend to be very, um, remember this is called global, abstract, intuitive, very imaginative people. All right, they see the big picture. They're big picture people. So they see the whole rather than all the little parts. All right, they love working with and being with people. Um, they are very perceptive and they often go with their gut feelings about people and about things and about events, and they're often very correct. Um, so they can and they need to see a relationship between things. So um, they have problems, so if you just tell them to go and do this one thing, like give them the relationship, give them the reason behind why they're doing this, and then they'll, they're fine with it. They can see many options for processes. And this is because of their, again, very creative mind. They really like doing things. They're not the kind to just sit and think a lot and be super introspective as much as they, they just really like doing things and thinking while they're doing. Now, struggles and challenges with your right brain thinkers are that they need to relate what they're doing to real life, like I mentioned before. They can be easily distracted. So staying focused on one task can be a struggle for them. Um, dealing with lots of details, as you can imagine. Um, so they can struggle with things like self-checking their math work. Um, so they can get those math concepts easily, but it's going back and doing those little tiny detail things that really frustrate them. So again, along this, um, in language arts, editing written work um, is difficult for them and for some reason seeing marks uh, like correction marks on their papers like when you're grading papers and stuff um, that is very overwhelming to them and so um, a tip for you is like say for spelling if they've written a paragraph or a paper for you and there's spelling errors instead of marking all those spelling words just pull those out and put them in with their regular spelling words that they're going to be learning that week that's a better method for them. Now, your right brain learners, let's talk about how they flourish, okay? They flourish when they are able to use their imagination to visualize and understand things. When you give them essay questions on tests so that they can see the whole picture. Um, they thrive using color in their um, schoolwork, in their workbooks, in their worksheets, in their tests, um, flashcards. Um, they just really do well with color, and you can learn to use color strategically as well. Humor and emotions, so stories in school lessons help them a lot. And why? Because they can see that big picture and they can relate to it better. It's not just a bunch of random facts and figures down there because that's how they see it. So let's um, talk about like for math, okay? When you're teaching them math, using manipulatives to start with, that helps them a lot, okay? And then teaching them like say their math facts and using their fingers, okay? But then take it a step further and teach them touch math. So touch math is when, let me grab this, it's when you take a number, When you take a number like this number five and you assign it points, so 
a point here, a point, three, four, five. Do you see how I did that? So there's five points. So now instead of using their fingers to count to five or to multiply by five or divide by five, they just simply touch it with their pencil or their crayon or their marker. And that's called touch math. And so they thrive with that as well. And we'll come back to these cards and how these cards can be used in a little bit. Um, so um, other flashcards, um, add some humor to it. Uh, make up stories, do weird stories that really grab their attention and that it sticks to them, okay? So, um, for example, you could do um, with math you, or spelling even. Um, so you could come up with a story with your colorful animation. You can make your own flashcards, and I'll show you some flashcards here in a little bit. Or you can buy some already made. We used um, right brain strategies through um, Diane Craft a lot. And so I had ordered and bought these flashcards that had a story. And so like the number five would be animated. It would have legs and arms and, and eyes and a hat maybe. And, and it was all in color, of course. And so the number five might be the story was the number five might be going next door to the number four, who was also animated in a different way and in color and they were going to get 20 chickens. And so there you've got five times four equals 20 and there'd be little chickens on there as well. And this just really helped because between the story, the color, and the animation, that really helped my child to remember. So that is one way. Um, so, and then one more tip I'll give you, they flourish, you can teach them to look up with their eyes, and particularly if they look up and to the left a little bit, that helps trigger the memory part of their brain, and it will help them to memorize, and it will also help them to recall things that they have memorized in the past. So that's just a simple trick that you can teach them as well. Now let's talk about your left brain thinkers, okay? Most traditional curriculum is designed for your left brain thinkers. So. If you are a left brain thinker, if you grew up going to a traditional classroom, a lot of this will resonate with you. So they're very detail oriented. Um, they can miss the big picture because they're so busy focusing on perfecting all those little details. They generally like to work alone, not always, but generally. Um, they're very logical. Um, so they prefer to have multiple facts to put together themselves and come to a conclusion, okay? And they're self-motivated. Um, they like thinking. They just really like thinking deep thoughts. And um, they can take facts and figures and they can just make something out of it. So struggles and challenges include they need to complete one task before starting the next one. And they get very frustrated if you assign them two or three things to do before they have finished the first one. Um, dealing with abstract and vague notions, that's a struggle for them as well. And not feeling prepared for something. And it can be anything. It can be a, a simple thing, like if you spring on them, come help me set the table, versus telling them earlier in the day, like, hey, later today I want you to help me set the table. Um, to doing a research paper, to doing a big project around the house or outside. Now let's talk about how they flourish, okay? Um, they flourish when learning is um, sequential. So when you teach them chronological and sequential things like in history. Um, with repetition, they flourish with repetition. So for rote memorization, you don't need to do the funny cards with them. They just need plain black and white flashcards that they can practice over and over. Time tests, they do really well with that. It, it's just they need those facts and practice them over and over. Um, when they can focus on data alone, um, so they've got the facts, the obvious, what's right there in front of them. Don't give them a lot of fluffy stuff. They don't like that. Black and white written material, they flourish really well with that. Um, some of them do well with a little bit of color, but some of them, if you put too much color to something, it can be really distracting to them. They just want to see those facts in black and white. Um, multiple choice tests. They really like that because they can see the right answer amongst some wrong answers, and somehow that fits in their, in their mind. So they do really well with workbooks of all kinds, worksheets, memorizing facts, like I said, um, time tests, basic flashcards, nothing fancy, um, lectures. They do really well with that as well. 
Um, they do well in language arts it, for learning new vocabulary words and grammar. If you just give them some words and let them, give them a dictionary and let them research it and write out those definitions, they do really well with that, where your right brain learner will not. They'll get very frustrated with that. So, let's talk about some of these products that I've pulled out that you could be using with your children. Okay, um, to start with, let's, um, I, I'm gonna do a comparison for you. So what I've done is I've tried to pull one, sometimes two, of a subject so that I can show you here's a right brain, here's a left brain. So you can just see the differences. So let's start with regular English. I'm move some stuff here. All right, so for your left brain, You've got easy grammar, okay? And I'm just gonna flip through this a little bit. So as you can see, it's just simple, black and white, and it's just the facts, because that's how they learn best, all right? Next, for right brain, I pulled two things. Language smarts, and I also tried to grab the same level for each. So as you can see, very colorful, animated. So this helps them again, because this is their learning style. Or language lessons for living education. Let me find the beginning of an exercise. Because each one starts with a story. I want you to know I just flipped right to them. Here we go. This one starts with a story, Feast of the Tabernacles. So after the story, and there's an oral narration practice here, then you've got your work pages that again have a little bit of color and have a little bit more information instead of just the facts to help them. So this makes it a little more uh, relatable to their own lives, all right? Let's look at another example. Teaching reading. So for your left brain child, teach your child to read in 100 easy lessons. So there's a little bit of color. That's because this red or this pink, this is what you would say aloud to them as you're teaching them to read. But then you can just see where it's just like a put your finger here and go to the right to train their eyes. And it's just a little, there's a one little picture here, but there's not a lot there because it's just straightforward. Okay, and then your right brain child, you've got explode the code. So this says goldfish and sold fish. So this has got some black and white pages, but it's got some unique humor in here. Let me see if I can find one. Um, can a scarecrow use a walkie-talkie to call its pals? Is a baseball much smaller than a tall camel? So just some quirky things that will help them to remember their grammar and their phonics and their vocabulary as they're learning to read. Next. Left brain, we've got Apologia, exploring creation with zoology, flying, create, flying creatures of the fifth day. And so this is a traditional textbook. Very good quality, very good facts. Versus your right brain science would look more like this. The Sassafras Science Adventures, volume one, zoology. This reads like a novel. So this is about two kids whose uncle is a um, crazy professor. He's a scientist and they go visit him and they end up getting into um, like time warp. You can see here from the picture and they experience all kinds of science in all kinds of different ways. And so this is a different way to learn, but this is how your right brain learner will learn best. Now, here. Okay, learning the Constitution. Left brain. We've got 
Foundation for Freedom, a study of the United States Constitution. Again, a traditional textbook with facts and quizzes and information and documents. And then a simple quiz and test packet. Again, black and white. Easy to follow, great for that left brain learner. Your right brain learner might like something more like this. Our Constitution rocks. So this has got a little bit bigger print, it's broken, broken up uh, so it's a, a little easier to read. It's got little um, speech bubbles. Um, here she's saying what Governor Morris is saying is that the idea of mutual check and security was spot on but not the idea of separate branches of Congress representing separate classes of people. So you've got little cartoon characters, and it's just more in a story style. So that would be for your right brain learner. And then for history, you might try using the mystery of history for your left brain learner. Again, a great traditional textbook, a heavy textbook. It's got great information in it, very straightforward. And then your right brain learner, a little more creative, the World Story 3. This is the modern age. Again, this kind of parallels with the other one. This is Explorers Through the Present Day. And it's a little more broken up, as you can tell, a little bit bigger pictures. And it's written more in a um, conversation style so that your right brain, brain learner can understand it better and relate to it better. All right, handwriting. So for your left brain learner, um, cursive practice sheets, these are just your Simple, repetitive, practice those letters over and over and over. Nothing fancy, nothing fluffy. And then for your right brain learner, we've got a reason for handwriting. This has scripture verses and outreach. This starts out with practicing that, but then it goes right into let's use what you've been writing and here's some scriptures. And then um, you're going to practice, and then you're going to write your own sentences as well. And there's discussion questions as well. And then at the back, there is a colorful, color, there is a color page to go along with each week for each scripture that the kids can write out whatever they want, or they can write that scripture in their best handwriting, and then they can color the page however they would choose. So again. It's um, different levels of helping that child to learn and help it to stick in their mind. Spelling power is, um, I actually use this one with both of my kids, with my right and my left brainer, um, so right brain learners. So the reason I was able to do this is because spelling power is, um, it, it has a lot of different, it has a variety of ways to teach spelling. So where I taught my left brain learner just straightforward spelling words, with my right brain learner, I did all of the different optional activities with her. And so um, there's also 10 steps that you do with both right and left brain, and you do these same 10 steps with, the same, with these different spelling words each week. But somehow in doing those same 10 steps over and over and over, it took a couple of years, but all of a sudden my right brain learner, who was a terrible speller, all of a sudden it was like she, she just got it. Everything clicked. And I had somebody explain it to me at a homeschool convention workshop that it's kind of like when you ride your bicycle in the same path over and over and over, and those tires create that rut. It kind of did the same thing in her mind. And so just doing those steps over and over and over with all the different activities, all of a sudden she got it. And then we weren't, we didn't have to do quite so many different activities after that. So spelling power can be used for both. Now for a right brain learner, if you want to try something different, a reason for spelling, this has scripture values and fun activities in it. 
So it's not just your straightforward spelling words. It's got all kinds of different things in it to help cement these words and make it a little more creative, a little more fun. We've got color. Um, so this helps your right brain learner. Then, for math, all right. the whole Saxon kit, but I'm just going to show you the student workbook. So Saxon math has been around forever, and it is really good for your left brain learner. It's just your traditional math book. Maybe you grew up taking Saxon math. Um, so again, it's the facts, and it's just in with lots of practice. That's great for your left brain learner. For your right brain learner, you might want to try math lessons for a living education. And again, these are the same grade levels. So this has got stories and different activities, and you can just tell it's just broken up and different. It's not just problem after problem after problem because um, they've come at it from different angles and given your kids some different ways to think about how to apply the math that they're learning. Now, Oops. flashcards. So for your left brain learner, you would just want something like this. They're just black and white, they're just simple, and this, is, this will work really great. For your right brain learner, you might need to special order some flashcards, such as what I was talking about before, or make your own. So this is very easy and simple to do, and you can even, with an older child, have them make their own, and then they can add their own story to it, they can add their own color to it. And when I'm talking about color, I don't mean the card itself needs to be color, I mean that what you put on the card. So let me show you another example. So. Remember these? So this is the three corner flashcards. So this one happens to be multiplication and division. So your right brain learner will learn great when they can see the answer on the front of the card. And so you cover the answer and then uncover it and then notice that the answer is in a different color than the other two numbers. And these are double sided as well. And so this is a simple way. This doesn't have the humor to it. This doesn't have a story to it. But these are other simple flashcards. Now your left brain learner is going to say, that's cheating because the answer's on the front. But this is how the right brain learner learns best. OK. Another valuable tool for you, this is a tip for you, is a dry erase board. You know, with a dry erase board and some colorful markers, like your right brain learner will flourish with this. For one thing, they can do problems, spelling, whatever it is, drawing. They can do it, they can erase it, they can do it again. So repetitive, very over and over and over. Um, with the color, that adds to helping them to memorize things, to learn things and to understand it, to process it better. So it's inexpensive and it's simple to do. And again, um, you can write problems on here and then have them finish it. You can put spelling words on here or you can have them do it or give it to them as extra practice or as incentive if they finish a worksheet that you've given them that they can do this on, on their own as well. So this is a really handy tool to have as well. Now, how do you know your kids' styles? Besides watching the other previous posts that I've done, like I said, this is the fourth in a series. There are free learning um, style assessments online that you can look up and you can take those. If you have a young child, just take it for them and answer accordingly because you know them. Um, if you have an older child, let them take it themselves. Um, homeschool conventions are a great resource. And so whether you go and attend one and go to one of their workshops, um, you can find the recordings of the different workshops online. Um, look up the learning style workshops. There's usually always one at every homeschool convention I've ever been to, and I've been to a lot. Um, and they're just so informative, so fascinating. And they'll give you tips and tricks, and they'll show you different products that, other than what I have shown you as well. 
also check out hslda.org um, for articles on different learning styles and teaching styles as well. HSLDA is Homeschool Legal Defense Association. Um, again, I mentioned Diane Kraft of Child Diagnostics. I attended uh, many uh, workshops of hers, and I ordered products from her, and I consulted with her over the phone. Um, she has years of experience and expertise working with children in schools and in homeschools. Um, she's written articles. She has created um, resources, uh, all kinds. She has a whole line of right brain products um, and an entire right brain learning system. And you can find more information from her at Diane Craft, that's with a C, dot org. And we'll provide links for you as well in this video. Uh, another source is Dr. Kathy Cook. Um, she is at CelebrateKids.com, and she has books and podcasts, and she also is a popular homeschool convention speaker. Um, KathyDuffyReviews.com does a great job in um, reviewing all kinds of different curriculum, and she will often detail in there and say what kind of learning style works best with each curriculum that she has reviewed. Um, and then we have a couple of sources here. This book, The Way They Learn, this goes much deeper into the different learning styles than what I have even touched upon. Um, the author says that it can take two years or more to really completely get all this information. There's a lot of research that has gone behind this book, but it is fascinating and it is really interesting. And so this is a source that you might want to pick up and keep and just refer to off and on and, and maybe memorize and, and start analyzing everybody. <laughs> Another two sources. Now, if you are learning about the different learning styles and you are still having a struggling learner, then I would like to suggest that there could be something else going on. And so it could be more along the lines that they are a special learner, like a special needs learner. So it could be anything from dyslexia, could be a hearing problem, could be a vision problem. Um, there's all kinds of things that can affect a child's learning. And so this is a great source, Homeschooling Children with Special Needs. And she has a couple of chapters in here on different learning styles and how to know if your child has a special need or if it's a learning style thing to address as well. And then one more, no matter what, learn to teach and homeschool with confidence. This is a great little resource. Teaching from rest, um, Homeschooler's Guide to Unshakable Peace. So this is by Sarah McKenzie, and it is a great read. She, um, I would just keep a copy of this to refer to. She will address some of the things that you are facing. Um, she will address some things that you'll face in the future. And she does it with such great um, integrity and love and compassion. It's um, like she's sitting across from you having coffee or tea and just having a conversation with you. And so this is a great popular resource as well. So there you have it. Um, four different learning styles that I've touched on in the last three uh, posts as well as this one. So Watch those if you haven't, and then comment and let us know. What have you learned about yourself and each of your children? Did you know that there was such a thing as right brain and left brain? And after viewing this post, what are you thinking? Which of your children and what are you? Leave us comments and tell us, share with us. I hope that this was helpful for you. Um, I know it helped me a lot when I learned about the learning styles and then it helped my homeschool to go so much smoother and so much better. And I still apply it today in my life in all different areas. So as always, you can find these products and more at Mordell.com. We also have a blog where we have homeschool articles and other lifestyle articles as well. Again, thank you for watching. Thank you for taking this time out of your day to um, spend time with me. And again, let's grow and learn and share and encourage each other. So leave comments and have a conversation here. Thank you for watching. Have a great day and enjoy your homeschool life. Bye.